Okay, so I want to talk about thematic cartography and thematic mapping, but it's kind of a vague general term, and my working definition is that it's um, they're maps that use data that do not directly relate to depictions of the physical landscape or are used specifically for navigation. A lot of times thematic maps are used to look at a piece of information um, spatially that we may think we understand the spatial kind of uh, pattern on the landscape, but they're they're almost used more for investigation. Kind of um, they're used to look at the land in a different way by a theme, um, and the themes could be anything. It could be population dynamics, it could be um, weather phenomena, traffic patterns. It goes on and on and on. Um, demographics is a, is a big one, um, but I'll just show you some types of thematic maps, and that'll be good enough for today. This is called a choropleth map. It's kind of the most common type. Um, the problems that we have with with thematic maps is that, especially when we're mapping people, most often our data are reported by kind of these boundaries. These um, they're 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 recorded in these polygons, and um, these aerial units, therefore, kind of generalize that whole area. And so, a lot of the issues around thematic mapping have to do with with um, with normalizing and kind of dealing with these problems that even though we've reported all of our information by this county, for instance, when we go to make the map, we don't know where any of those individual people might have lived within that county. So if we say, oh yes, well, you know, 500 people live in this county, um, we don't know if they lived all in one corner or, or kind of evenly spread throughout the place, but but what what the map tells us is that we have to generalize kind of by our reporting unit. And that's that's a big takeaway is that no matter how we no matter how we make our thematic maps, we're always generalizing by our reporting unit. And here in Corpleth land, our reporting units are always polygons. And in this case, I've taken off the um the boundaries so we can't see the boundaries of those reporting units. And normally that's good practice, but in this particular case the counties are pretty much the same size everywhere, and it, and it makes the composition a lot cleaner to kind of get rid of those county boundaries. So it's important when we're thematic mapping to kind of be conscious of, of how it was the data collected and how are we showing it. This is a population density map, and in the next video I'll, I'll talk a lot more about why it is that we need to report. With Corpleth we always need to use kind of ratios instead of raw counts. Um, but for this purpose, it shows um, kind of classifications um, for each county where we, we can see different classes. So the colors kind of go up. They, they start off with a low population density, and they go up and up and up and up. And the classifications kind of determine how we, we see that density change um, because every single county has a different density. But we have to, at some point, put them into class and say all of these densities get one color all of the next densities get another color, and so on, up until, you know, obviously Cleveland, New York City, um, Boston, D.C., that kind of thing, Philadelphia. So this is one way to represent, for instance, population on the landscape would be population density, and this is using a choropleth map. So choropleth is one kind. Um, another kind we have is a proportional symbol, and a proportional symbol instead kind of says, well, we have these counties, but the color doesn't do a good job at actually showing us quantity. It kind of just shows us the intensity of that uh, of that quantity, um, the ratio of that quantity. So, if you want to show raw quantity, sometimes people will use proportional symbols in which they they adjust the the size of the symbol to represent a quantity, and it does a bit of a better job kind of showing um, raw quantity. But you have to be careful because um, we've adjusted the area of these circles with with area so it's not uh... it's not over representing quantity when, when your eye looks at this circle and your eye looks at this circle you might think well that's about three times or three or four times as much as that one well that's because this circle is actually three to four times as big as that circle um, when we do other types of maps like the bar or the histogram chart map we actually use the, the width or the height of something and we would double the height if we if we did that with the circles it would kind of um, it would over inflate our idea of how big that circle is so there are some pitfalls to proportional symbol maps but um, you know we'll kind of learn those as we go 
And the other problem was that sometimes they, they all overlap. So in this area, right, uh, that's why I've made them transparent here, is that there are many counties with, with a large amount of population. And so in this particular case, we don't really get to see the full, the kind of the biggest circle to see how, how many people live proportionately here. All we get is the fact that they, they all overlap on top of each other, and the, the transparency setting lets us see that kind of that conflict there. Um, not a bad thing to do. You can also use uh, proportional pie charts where we could have categories of the population. Um, but this is a, a chart symbol map is the way I would describe it. Uh, let's do one more way of showing population. And another way of showing population might be to have a dot density map. And the dot density takes all those county boundaries and randomly assigns places for points within those counties. In this case, we're looking at one point represents every 1,000 people. And it kind of does a nice job of showing the overall trend for the region um, and the kind of, it, it has a really great way of showing sparseness and, um, and kind of density. But the problem is that a lot of times these maps get shown without the, the borders. They get shown like this so that you don't see where the data came from. And it has the illusion that every single point is exactly, let's say, where a town is or where a person's house is or something like that. But a dot density map actually just kind of gives us a feel for the landscape, but all of the, the, the points on the map were randomly generated inside of these boundaries. And so, one, two, three, look at these for example. There are 3,000 people who live in this county, but the dots could have just as easily been placed there, there, or there, or anywhere. But the fact that they're all generated randomly actually is good because it, it helps us see the overall trend um, as kind of a random product of, of what's happening. So this is a really effective um, a really effective way to, to map uh, multiple categories. We could do um, dot density maps where we use a different color to represent, let's say, um, income level or um, other types of demographics, and it can help us see regional patterns really well. The key is that we, we kind of need to be transparent about the reporting area because we don't want people to wrongfully assume that these are discrete points. Um, another type of uh, point map would be a discrete dot map. So this is a dot density map. A discrete dot map would be if we had a data set that had actual points with latitude and longitude coordinates everywhere. Um, weather maps often have a lat long coordinate for every storm or something like that. and um, you can make heat maps from those. We're not going to get into those now. For now, just remember that if you see a dot map and somebody says, oh, well, this is a dot map, well, your first question should be, is it a dot density map or is it a, is it a discrete dot map? Um, in this case, um, I think for the region, a dot density map, even if they're randomly generated points, it does a good job at showing the regional trend. So um, those are kind of three ways of showing the same thing, right? We've got the core pleth map, um, there's a proportional symbol map, which could also be shown without the county boundaries, but um, the symbol just hovers over the centroid. Then we have the dot density where um, dots are kind of randomly distributed throughout the polygon. Another um, kind of another version of a map is, is let's go back to the core pleth for a second. This is a core pleth map, but instead of a, a linear color scheme, it has a divergent color scheme. And this is kind of the classic Democrat Republican map where we have dark blue for places that um, very strongly went for Obama and lighter blue, lighter blue, gray is about 50-50 and then um, darker red kind of like that and then and even darker and then the darkest is is mostly for Romney. And this again is a is kind of a nice way to show um, the, the, the divergence of a trend. Um, but again, it kind of shows more the ratio and the intensity of um, the kind of the disparity in the data, but what it doesn't do is show us the the relative quantities and proportions. So while this is kind of nice, it would be nice to see um, something more along the lines of, of of a quantity. So that's when we can use a map like this, and this is uh, similar to the proportional symbol map. It is a chart map, but it uses kind of linear. Um, linear measurements to kind of differentiate between quantities. So the circles were varying the area of the circle to show the quantity. Here we vary the length of the bar 
to um, to show the difference in quantity. And um, this is kind of neat, I think, because it shows you that, oh yes, well, you know, it looks like there are places that are dramatically, you know, around DC here, you can see there's dramatically more Democratic than Republican right around that area. Um, but then there are other places that um, on the Corpleth map look very, very um, kind of intensely, uh, you know, Republican or, or they, they're very much kind of equal 50-50. And when we look at the quantities, we can see, well, yes, this is a very depopulated, um, very rural and very Republican kind of county. So, so it gets the, uh, the intensity shown in terms of the disparity is shown on the, the Corpleth map. But um, bar maps like this are kind of histogram maps, I guess you would call them, are, are more effective in some ways at showing the, the underlying kind of quantities to the trend. So the, the, the end of the narrative here for thematic maps is that um, really a blend of all of these types um, shown together is the best way to, is the best way to get at a trend. You can't really look at one of any of these and really understand what's going on um, that well. It's always best to have kind of a uh, uh, a myriad of options. And um, for instance, I just put the population density map underneath this histogram map, and now you can kind of see that yeah, well, it looks like urban areas tend to have a little bit more of kind of a de uh, a, a democratic bent to them. Um, but of course, this is also the north, so. Um, the Northeast even. Um, but anyway, this is kind of just a, a general intro video to different types of thematic maps, and um, hopefully it'll get your brain out of the, uh, the red state, blue state fallacy. So um, I hope you've enjoyed it, and you can watch it again if it was kind of confusing, but um, thanks for listening.